It was just last Thursday that Raymond Bucky and his mother, Peggy McMartin Bucky, were acquitted of 52 charges of child molestation in the notorious McMartin preschool case from Southern California. Tonight you're going to meet Peggy Ann Bucky, who was also accused in the McMartin case. The charges were finally dropped, but Peggy Ann is still trying to rebuild her life. There is no evidence, and they will never have evidence because it never happened. Nothing ever happened at that school. Peggy Ann Bucky in 1986, a year and a half after it all began. The school was the McMartin Preschool, owned by Bucky's family. It was a respected institution in the seaside community of Manhattan Beach, south of Los Angeles. Peggy Ann Bucky, along with her brother, mother, grandmother, and three of the school's teachers were accused of molesting hundreds of children. None of the defendants ever wavered in denying their guilt. I know I'm innocent. The people that I love and I'm close to know I'm innocent. God knows I'm innocent. There is strong evidence, compelling evidence, to indicate that two of these defendants are guilty. The evidence and the indication as to the other five is incredibly weak. Los Angeles District Attorney Ira Reiner dropped the charges against Peggy Ann and four others after an 18-month preliminary hearing. It was found that the medical evidence was ambiguous, the children's stories were not supported by physical evidence, and the techniques used to develop the testimony were called into question. So her mother and brother went to trial, while Peggy looked forward to returning to her job at the high school where she taught until she was arrested. When I was dropped from the case, I reapplied for my teaching credentials. And at that point, the school district that I taught for stepped in and asked the state not to grant me credentials. For three years, Peggy worked as a legal aide to the lawyer defending her brother, Ray. At the same time, she fought her own fight to regain her teaching credentials. It came down to a three-month hearing in which a judge heard the macabre stories of the McMartin school told once again. This mother of a preschool student describes what her daughter said about Peggy. I was naked in front of my child, took my child's clothing off, encouraged my child to participate in, touch, in acts of touching. When I did this, when I, you know, demanded the hearing and when I decided to go forward with this, I think I took a big risk with the publicity and everything that was going against me. To me, my odds of winning was slim. But she did win. The judge agreed the evidence was weak and Peggy will no longer have to work outside her field. She's now developing a new special ed program for her school district and will soon return to the classroom. I find it very sad. Very sad that the judge in this hearing wasn't willing to listen to the children. That he clearly had his mind made up before we ever walked in the room. It's unlikely this mother will ever accept Peggy Ann Bucky's innocence as fact, and she is not alone. Manhattan Beach will remain a place where some people believe the Buckys are monsters, criminals who violated children, who led them through satanic rituals, used them as objects of pornography. These are the stories that were told, stories that Peggy Ann will have to live with no matter how normal she tries to be. A long time ago, at the beginning of this, I used to worry about what people thought. It really bothered me that people could think that I had done something so, just so revolting to me. And then there came a point that I just said, I don't care anymore. I do not care if you think I'm innocent. I don't care if the guy sitting next to you thinks I'm innocent, because I would go crazy if I worried about it. Journalist Kevin Cody writes for The Easy Reader, a community newspaper in Hermosa Beach, near Manhattan Beach. He has covered the case consistently from its beginning and has seen a change in what people think about it. I think the whole, everybody was convinced that the allegations were true when the story came out. At the time of the indictments, even the prosecution admitted that they didn't have it, the kind of hard evidence that they hoped to get, the photographs, for example, or the adult witnesses. But given the, the scope of the case, they were confident that that stuff would turn up in their subsequent investigation. So five years and it hasn't turned up. So there you have people saying, geez, you know, this, this whole case doesn't make sense. And based on this, this ambiguity about the case, maybe we're a little bit hasty in presuming guilt here. The defense in the McMartin case has blamed the bizarre tales on social workers who interviewed the children using hand puppets to promote a comfortable atmosphere. The defense argued they trained the children to believe they had been molested. It's an explanation as difficult to believe as the original charges themselves. 
but this is a story of who you believe and what you believe. The trial of Ray Bucky and his mother will go on for another six months. Peggy Ann Bucky was legally cleared, but can never be the same. The sad thing in cases like this is you can't get anything back. You know, I, I can never get back the five years that were taken from me. I can never get back that I was smeared across the country as a child molester. I can never get back, you know, the things that I had before. I can't get them back, and I have to just accept that. There's victims on both sides of this, and no one will win in the end. Regardless of the outcome, no one will win. Obviously, Peggy Ann Bucky was not the only person whose life was changed by the McMartin case. The 12 jurors who sat in on the 33-month trial are now finally going back to the lives that they put on hold. According to a recent USA Today article, one juror was quoted as saying, I think everyone was the victim in this case.